Hey guys, it's David with the Whiskey Rebellion Barcast. Everyone's having a good night. Thank you all, gentlemen, for coming and joining us. Uh, start off with an apology. I'm a little bit under the weather, so I might sound a little bit cruddy, um, which is also why I'm drinking tonight. I'm going to start right off with this. Tom Turkey. Um, this is a, a fun bottle that I actually won. I want to thank uh, Jay Cooper for giving this as a door prize for a costume. Um, it's not great whiskey, um, which is great because I can't really taste it too much. But I did want to have something to kind of you know, burn out the back of the throat a little bit. Um, and it's doing a good job uh, of that. So I'm in my own way being good to myself. What's everyone else drinking tonight? Um, we're going to start with Rob. What are you drinking, sir? So tonight I'm doing a little uh, Davies County Cabernet Barrel. 96 proof. Excellent, excellent pour. I'm, I've really been moving around some of the uh, the, the, the finished bourbons the last okay. couple of weeks. So it's a really nice pour. Cheers, gentlemen. Very good. Very Cheers, good. Um, let's go to Billy. What you got? Um, well, tonight I'm just having a little bit of bullet only because tomorrow night my Miami Heat are playing in Atlanta. And thanks to the Godfather, I got something I've really been looking forward to trying. Very and nice. I don't want to have to try to get up early in the morning if I'm hungover. So I'm going to be putting a dent in some stuff tomorrow. So shout out to the Godfather. But tonight, I'm just having a little bit of bullet. Cheers, brother. Awesome, awesome. Um, oh, Mark's joining us. Welcome, welcome, Mark. Um, let's, Mark. Go to, uh, let's go to Little John next. What are you drinking tonight, sir? So tonight I'm doing a little bit of the Widow Jane, uh, lucky nice. scene, uh, also courtesy of the Godfather. But um, yeah, that's what I what I decided to pour tonight, and then I'm probably going to pour. I think my second pour is going to be this. I'm going to try this George Dickel. I still try it a little more. And which one is that? It's the Column Still. Oh, okay. I have not seen that before. All right, um, let me see here. Chuck, what are you drinking, sir? Tonight I'm drinking uh, Evan Williams Single Barrel, 2012. Very nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Figured that'd be something good to uh, yeah. identify with. with it's, our... un it's unfortunate. Your um, your face is completely obscured by the little icon. Yeah, I see oh, that. Yeah. It's just, you're, just, you're just a mouth. <laughs> no. Yeah. And you got your. your Maybe it's for the better, mouth. though. <laughs> the, mouth, the mouth is the most important no, part. Face of for radio for is my fight. thing. Um, yeah. but uh, sorry about that. Uh, can you, can you rotate anyway. the view. Uh, where there's three, maybe I don't want to, I don't want to monkey with it right now, but but maybe I'll maybe I'll figure it out. Let's, does that help? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. A little bit. Look, go. At Much better. Look at that. I got I can do all the things. No, I've lost track of who it Mal, what are you drinking, sir? I am drinking uh, barrel rye, uh, British Bourbon Society pick. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Um, I've had this for some time. It is a 107.86 proof. Uh, was not a fan when we first started. Very, very heavy on the fennel, but now it's settled down into grassy notes, which is hmm. superb. One of the better, one of the better rise in my collection. And I've got a few very, very good ones. Very nice. Very good to hear. Uh, Marky Mark, you are muted, sir. But what are you drinking tonight? How you doing? There he goes. There he is. Yeah, you're still muted. Still uh, muted, dude. Still muted. It was a live show. <laughs> 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 you're still muted, man. We'll, Mark, no, dude, we can't hear you. We'll have to come back to you, man. Um, yeah, I know he was doing the he was doing subtitles there. Uh, <laughs> hold, the hold the bottle up to the screen. Yeah, hold the bottle up, man. We can just see the bottle. That'll be funny. <laughs> Drinking. Why just, why just, why just, we're gonna go to solo. It was, it was a three quarter. Oh. Look at that giant silent face. So much for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's 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 here. Okay. All right, there we go. Uh, three chord. Three chord. Okay. Three chord. Nice. There you go. Good stuff. Okay, well that's that's around the horn first time. Um, so tonight's topic, uh, one of the things that we oh, had, uh, Kara Coleman says greetings. Let me put that up there. Greetings, Kara. Yeah. Boop, 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 boop. I'll start that one. Um, 
So tonight's topic, we had, I had talked with Chuck a little bit before we got, we got started tonight. Um, one of the things we were going to talk about, we talked about last week uh, was if someone's like brand new to bourbon, whiskey, spirits in general, like what kind of recommendations do we make for each kind? We kind of went through that stuff this week. We want to talk about, um, say you had this person over your house. This is going to be kind of a two-parter, but say you had this person over your house and most of you guys have pretty strong, strong collections of different things. Is there anything that you would want to steer them away from them being kind of brand new? Because there's this conversation about like, what would a person who kind of doesn't know anything about anything, not through any fault of their own, but like, what would you think they would maybe not have enough of a developed palette to appreciate? Like, what would you be like, eh, maybe we're not going to start with this guy. We're going to start over here instead. Like, is there anything that comes to anybody's mind, like, off the top of their head? Well, what I, what I would do is, it's not so much, I think, you know, a particular bottle. I think the biggest thing is making sure it's something that they can handle and mm-hmm. something they can appreciate. Yeah. Um, you know, Rob and, and Mark both know. Uh, you know, you don't start a guy off on a cigar like a Padron 7000. He's going to lose his lunch. He's going to, you know, be in the bushes in a minute. Right. He's going to be all green. Um, so, you know, do you want to start somebody on something that's 110 proof? Maybe not. Maybe you want to start them off on something that they can take, you know, have a couple of pours of. I mean, you start them off with something that's a really, really, really high proof. They might not get through the first pour, and you know, before you know it, they're on the floor. And not yeah. only that, you got to start to worry about somebody's safety after that. You know, yeah. that's a All that's right. a really fair point, David. Am yeah. I still muted? No, you're good. Oh, yeah. you. Okay, I don't, welcome to the show. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I'm sure yeah. that I'm not muted. That's what I was saying. But anyway, yeah. um, yeah, I think you guys have heard me say this a million times in terms of, um, and two of our guests will tell you firsthand from me. I never, ever, ever start anyone with any proof higher than 95. Yeah. yeah. And it really, and I say 95 because there's a few things that, that check in right about 92, 93. But in general, I go right at 80. I do Rebel. I'll do Basil. And now with Basil Toast, I always do Basil Toast because it's, mm-hmm. it's just got, it's got a much better flavor than, than regular Basil, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had one of the three core blendeds. So good. Nice. This is the store pick, by the way. Oh, it's good. Mm. But um, yeah, I, tr- I try to keep it right at about 80, maybe 86. And then, you know, from there, because if I, you know, a lot of times people say, oh, you should go get 107. Do even every women they'll say um, bottle and bottle. I'm like, no, that's too high. 100 proof. Because some 100 proofs drink like 100 proof and some drink much higher than 100 proof. So. Typically, yeah. Gene says, uh, yeah, you have to work up to it. You cannot just jump in at the deep end. Yeah. 100% agree with that. Um, you don't want to scare people off, and especially uh, high, high proof. Personally, personally, for, personally, for me, I think it's a no brainer for us, but not necessarily for the uninitiated, um, not to start anybody off on anything flavored. Yes, Which is, yeah. it, 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 it's a given, it's a given, but it could be seen as a bit of a segue into. In the bourbon and Allegra, as, as you guys would say, mm-hmm. um, uh, cocktails, yes. Flavored bourbons, no. Flavored whiskeys, no. You mean you, you you're not keeping them up on, on screwball or what's the other one? Squirrel <laughs> peanut butter bourbon? Yeah, they, they, uh, these these are the people that go. I know a lot of people like people that are now drinking out of brown paper bags on the corner of the street, dude. This as, as far as <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you're probably not drinking screwball out of brown paper bag. It's like 35 okay. bucks or something. But uh, I agree. Let's start with it off. With the cigars. Yeah, Billy, that's a that's a great analogy with cigars because, like, yeah. I know, like, I've had a few cigars, but I don't really know much about them. And most cigars, I am, like, green in the gills by the time I'm done with it. Or I'm like, uh, my little pink lungs can't handle. Like, the, the, the inter- of pretty much any cigar like i'm just that it just ruins me for the rest of the night like i have a cigar it's over so like you know getting more into cigars would be like well what are the milder things or like do i only smoke half of it or like you know, what would you do kind of things that, like bridge the gap now it's an interesting point that you made about wanting to avoid those because i think they're kind of explicitly marketed as bridges into <laughs> into like hard liquor is, you know, the, the things like the screwball and the flavored ones. Like I think someone had posted the other day about the, the Jameson, like orange or whatever the orange, yeah, yeah. you know, like, yeah, this is for is, people is, who are it, like, 
it, 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 they are they are marvelled that way. But is it a good way to introduce a friend to the world of <laughs> good of, of good bourbon? Not a, not not a, not a friend you like. <laughs> No, no, not at all. That's, that's, Maybe that's not. the point. That's the point I was making. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think the flavored stuff really would be if you're gonna use it as a mixer, yeah. uh, something along Possibly. those lines. Yeah. You know, I mean, because even with the screwball, you know, it goes good with like a cranberry juice or yeah. or something like that. But somebody, it's, who, it's like I said, Billy. Cocktails, yes. Yeah, even exactly. in the bourbon, no. Yep. Yeah, and and really and truly. If somebody's gonna really be into bourbon, then I'll introduce them into something. But if somebody's just a casual drinker, really and truly, I will not even get them into it because yeah. I, I even if it's a flavor something or something that's low proof, you know, it's like I have my humidor where if somebody comes over, yeah, you can pick out of that box, and then I have my humidor where no, no, no. No, no, no. It's like a little kid. Don't touch that. Leave that yeah, alone. Yeah, that's my Yeah. Um, so. Um, I want to read Gene's comment, and then we'll go to probably little John. Um, Gene says, yes, if you want them to learn to appreciate the bourbon, not wonder why it comes in peanut butter flavor. Yeah, so, you know, the, the gimmicks and the, you know, the kind of lowering the bar kind of thing that, like, you're not going to have – develop a, a better appreciation from those things. It might get you there, but like not from those things. Um, so uh, little John, your thoughts, sir, what would you be like? If someone came into your house, you'd be like, man, eh, let's, let's not do this one. Um, well, I, I think one of my first questions, and it's not even just me, I think it'd be for anybody um, is do you typically drink um, any of your liquors neat or on the rocks? Like how do you typically drink your, 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 your liquor um you know if they don't drink anything neat or either either even on the rocks you know that that will be a factor into what i get to them and it may be that if they lean towards you know cocktails i'm okay with putting a little higher proof um into a cocktail um so you know the lower proof isn't watered down um so those are i think those would be my kind of first two questions of you know how do you how do you typically drink liquor um, and then just asking some more questions to um, tailor the the whiskey or the bourbon directly to, you know, what their what their flavor is. I guess. I hear that. Just I just that. just to just to say, to David, when you said if you invite somebody into your house for a yeah. drink, and then you say typically, mm -hmm. oh, let's not go there. There's yeah. nothing. There's nothing I got that I would steer anybody away from. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, okay. So I think about it in this terms, not so much like as, as, too as, good as, for in, you. as in crap, as in crap, you know what I mean? But, right, right, right. Stuff like that, yeah, right. but like, yeah. say if I were to have, say Jody, for example, he would come over to my house. Guess <laughs> what? I drink scotch, right? So, uh, you know, if he didn't, you know, if yeah. what I knew about his palate would tell me stay the hell away from scotch. I mean, he doesn't, that doesn't need glass, to be spoken really water. in this, in this he group, has a glass of already, water. you know. Oh. But for somebody, you know, what you know about their palate or something like yes. that, and you no. don't know what their tastes are, enough. you're like, well, here's the things I would probably stay steer you away from. Yeah. Um, but and, and that was kind of more like my thinking. But like even more so, like I'm, if you I'm really don't you, know, I'm, what I'm, I'm, yeah, I, just is, to, I just had to pull you on the stand. No, 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 no. It's, it's fine. <laughs> I, wouldn't re, I wouldn't refuse. No, no. I think it's an important thing to bring up. Like I further yeah. wouldn't refuse anybody anything that they ask to try. Right? You know, not yeah. not in my house. Like mi casa su casa. So like. You know that's fine, but like I would say, if I'm trying to make recommendations and trying to figure out where you're at and try to understand even, even what your palate even is, even like, you learn yeah. your palate. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that's kind of more what was what my thinking on that was. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I think we need to go to Rob and Chuck. Or, or, Mark, did you? Go? Uh, I can't remember if you Chuck. did or not. You couldn't hear me, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come, come back. We'll come back. We'll come, we'll come back to you, Mark. We'll come back to you, Mark. <laughs> Let's go to Rob first. So I, I'm. I'm uh, I'm kind of like in where in the direction Little John went is kind of figuring out what how they drink it their their, their yeah. liquor first, and then kind of walk them through what what you may have. And I'm definitely not starting anybody anything over ninety. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's it's going to be something that's definitely going to be a little. And I, you know, I may even lean more towards something that's a a, a higher wheat in the mash bill mm. because it's going to be a little softer and a little sweeter sweet, yeah. who doesn't know how to, to really get into enjoying when you get into bourbons that are, you know, you're getting to the higher 
corn mashes that with the or, or a higher rye mash. You know, there a, a higher yeah. rye mash is definitely going to scare some people away with that spice. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's where you are in proof. Mm-hmm. It's that yeah. spice that they're going to get in the back of their throat, and they're just going to go, "Oh my god, that's terrible!" Or, "Oh, yeah. you've never had bourbon before. Here's some smoke wagon on cut on filled it." Right. <laughs> yeah. see, that's kind of the thing. Is like it, that's the other aspect of it too. It's like, what, do you do you even know like what you're experiencing? And like, you know, you can go uh, uncut on filter is not awful for most people, but let's say you know it was George T. Stag. What if you had Eagle Rare 17? You know, just uh, you know, up on your shelf, like you'd be like, yeah, let's. You've never had bourbon before. Let's go with this first. Like, I think most of us. Here's the go, glass, hey, glass of whiskey. Hey, hey, hey. There's the toilet roll in the fridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that was kind of my thinking. Mark, I, I want to go to you next, actually, and then I'm going to go to Chuck. All right. So now that you can hear me, so what I'm drinking, this is a uh, three quart single barrel. Mm-hmm. It's a, a local pick. I mean, can't see it, but it's a local pick from mm-hmm. um, uh, bourbon friendly, bourbon heavy restaurant here. Then uh, they always do excellent picks. So this is a damn good bottle. Very good, very good. Now, if you had someone over, came over your place, and they didn't really have much experience, you know, with with liquor, with with, with spirits, with whiskey, with bourbon, and mm-hmm. you're like, well, I, you know, I kind of want to introduce you to things, and you have this this amazing cornucopia because we know you got you got it like that <laughs> like you know well, like where would you be like ah maybe maybe not that one maybe maybe steer away from these guys would you or- so it depends on a person and i say that because some people if they're here they're more comfortable so like if it's family family just go walk right over to some bottles or walk over to my um the bar cart and start grabbing stuff and i'm like oh hold on hold on slow down yeah let me let me guide you a little bit. So I know you just picked up that that antique 107, but no, that's too high for you right now. <laughs> I, I, I know you see the little cute bottle that you've seen in all the John Wick movies. We're not gonna go there yet. <laughs> so, I, I'm gonna pull you over this a horsey way. bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. horsey <laughs> bottle. And see, they probably heard my dad. I don't know if you ever heard my dad when he talks about blanks. It's the horse. The horse. <laughs> he makes himself so. He makes yeah. himself so good. Everybody wants the horse. Um, or they see, you know, like stag with the antlers, like, oh, I like the antlers. No, you don't. Yeah. No, you, don't. <laughs> you, think you, you, might do. not, you might not drink anything else after sipping that for the first time. So yeah. I, I do. I I will intentionally guide them. If they're not on their own, if they just ask, <clears throat> excuse me, if they just ask, then again, like I said, I'm pulling basil out. I will pull out the Evan Williams Green Label. Um, Maybe it's 46? <laughs> Maybe. That can be a little high for folks. Um, and I don't mm. even think I have any regular makers right now. That's a little borderline. If if they're yeah, drinking, I think the forty six would be all right. It's sweet. It's gonna sweet winner. Yeah. If yeah. if they've had baseline makers, like if they've if they've like had at the bar kind really of thing, good, yeah. like yeah. if they've already tried that, I'd be like, you should try makers forty six. Like you'll you, you might appreciate that that progression. Yeah. Uh, John makes a great point here. <laughs> well, <laughs> who wouldn't? First of all, my star whiskey was the ETH small batch. Fell in love with bourbon ever since. <laughs> well, damn right. Yeah. I mean, like you he, he also How do you he also. Do? He also said, "Makers is a great starter whiskey." I found Rise or not, yeah. Rise initially, the first couple I tried, I didn't care for that much, and I stayed away from Rye for a very long time as a result of that. Vaughn says, <laughs> "No, Del Mark Lewis." All right, hey, um, my man Vaughn will tell you. I said same thing. Matter of fact, Vaughn, I owe your bottles coming, brother. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right, Chuck, uh, you're up, sir. Someone comes to your house and they see, you know, the splendor. And you go, uh, maybe not that one. What, what is it and why? Well, like Mark had mentioned, I'm going with a uh, Basil Hayden toast, mm. possibly. Because, like he said, it has more flavor. It's much more flavorful than regular mm. basil. Uh, I may go with a Evan Williams single barrel if they want to get a little, you know, mm. fancier. Because yeah. we're looking at uh, 86.6 proof. So we're still not getting into a real high. You know, yep. proof range. I wouldn't go over anything over 90, 90, 93 at the most. But that's even pushing it. Depending upon the match bill. The single good barrel range is lower proof than the bottle and bond. Yes. That's, I I had no idea. I was today years old. 90 to 92 is a, that you've got a good range of decent yep. whiskey at 90 to 92. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, also what I think we all would have to be careful of since most of us has a have a particular amount of bourbon and stuff on our shelves. 
somebody walked in and they didn't know what they was looking at or they could easily be intimidated. Okay. You know, oh, I would yeah. imagine, you know, if you go to Rob's house or Chuck's house and it's like a goddamn library in there, you need a goddamn <laughs> escort. <laughs> and it's got the ladder listen, that goes around. <laughs> which I think is, is nice because that's somebody who can truly educate you. Somebody who has sure. that amount of bourbon, they're not doing it for shits and giggles. They're not what you call your casual drinker. They can really educate you and point you in the right direction, which right. I think is a good thing where if somebody really didn't care, you know, they'll have you sipping on, you know, something that's just going to put you on your ass. I might like you at my house, but I don't know if I want you to spend the night. <laughs> right. you <know? laughs> so, you know, that's the other thing I think we would all would have to be a little careful about because people would be like, oh, God, what's that? And What's that? Mm -hmm. um, whereas we don't get caught up in a fancy bottle, you know, yeah. and people see a fancy bottle and, you know, they heard of it or seen it in the movie and they have yeah. no idea. Like I saw this thing on TikTok the other day where this young girl was going to be doing a tasting on uh, uh, Mad Dog 2020. And everybody was like, no, put it down. Tasting. Like, like, no, because she saw it, she thought it was cute, but it was I mean, like, it's not that it doesn't have its uses. Right. But you know, a, a young drinker drinking that would be in a very bad position after one or two of those, you know? Yeah, so, sure. and again, I'm not going to give somebody Stag Senior only because you can't really appreciate it, you know? I don't give somebody a, a Padron Aversario. God no. 20, no. I, I don't. Yeah, do don't that. give me. I would be embarrassed if you gave me that, and I wouldn't have any appreciation, and make me sick as a dog. Like you know, that's. I mean, yeah, it would be such a waste. You, you know, that's a that's a thirty dollars stick. I'm if I'm gonna give away a thirty dollars stick, I'm gonna give it away to somebody who smokes cigars. Yeah, somebody who appreciates. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Little, uh, little LFD double Lajero. Yeah, no, we're not, we're not doing that. You know, so you would have put it on her butt. Give him that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just yeah. put it like this: just from being in this group, what I've learned, you know, a year plus that I've been on the group now. I mean, somebody who's a newbie to it would be lost. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, I probably every week I learn something new from you guys. So I think we would have to be responsible vendors so to speak yeah if we were introducing somebody mm -hmm. because you can either really get them into it or severely turn them off to it right yeah. and that's, a, that's that's what i was going to say is like or, or set know, them on the wrong path bill right yeah we're, we're or set them on the wrong path i think we're all doing this to kind of help grow the our 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 love of bourbons and teach other people about I love people. sharing with other people. I was kind of I love bourbon so much. My you know, primary yeah. motivation, you know, is not, like not yeah. just give them, you know, a a hundred and twenty eight proof barrel proof <laughs> yeah. out the gate and go, let's just start yeah. with this and see what you think. But you know, the <laughs> craziest thing is people do that all day. I see that about three to four times in one of the fifty million groups I'm in. It's like, what's a good starter? Oh, you want to go and try Stag Jr. First off, they can't find it. But if they yeah. could find it, they're not sipping 130 proof. Come on, man. Sit down. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Gene says that's why he watches. Appreciate that, Gene. Good but, man. yeah, I mean, that's it, that's exactly my thing. Because if you guys are like me, you end up talking about it with people who are, like, outside this group or an outside mm -hmm. Facebook group. Like, you're just casually having conversations. You become that person that is known – Everybody in your little circle is someone who you know, who knows a little, who's an enthusiast, if not a connoisseur, um, yeah. of, of liquor. And so they hit you up for, for recommendations all the time. They want advice. They want to, you know, they want to learn from you. And so yeah. I say, well, how can I be basically a good ambassador so this person has a good experience? And, you know, if they want to get more into it, they can. And they, and they can understand, like, where they're at and what their, you know, what their palate is. And so they can go chase the things that they do like instead of chasing yeah. things that everyone else is telling them they're supposed to like, you know? Absolutely. And you know, that's why when like Chuck does a, a review on something, I don't just hit like on a comment. I actually read it. Oh, definitely. Because yeah. a lot no, of people, definitely. believe it or not, as a group, I guarantee you there's a lot of people that follow our group and look at the stuff we do and who may never hit the like, may never hit the subscribe, oh, none of that, but they watch what we do. 
they won't actually and they, use, and they use that information properly oh like they listen absolutely i'm sure somewhere some guys regurgitating chuck's reviews oh yeah absolutely you know he's probably because... wearing an ascot too <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> imitators man <laughs> so again you know i think it Dude, just, you should see what triple h is up there these days <laughs> right? i just think for us we all have to be good stewards of what it is that we do what stewards. we put out there and Lord. really be responsible because like i said again people may never hit like they may never scribe nothing right but they are watching they That's are right. watching you know, I, I, it's there. So, you know, again, it's being responsible and listen, not for nothing, but I guarantee you there's probably liquor store owners who watch what we do oh. and to see what we like, yeah. you know, I mean, listen, when Chuck posts his stuff, it's stuff that you never see anywhere. Yeah. So yeah. he's giving you like the upper echelon of stuff, but not, is he only giving it to you? He's giving you like a good description of it what it's all about, when it's coming. You know how hard that information can be to come by sometimes? Mm -hmm. You know? For sure, for sure. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's actually a great segue point. Um, because I, I wanted to I wanted to talk to Chuck and let him kind of you know intro this as an idea of like, okay, so they're at your house, you know, you've poured them something, you know, that you know that they're gonna <laughs> probably they're gonna enjoy, but they're not gonna be able to articulate what it is they like about it, right? They're gonna say it's smooth, right? And right. we all we all gonna cringe internally, but we're all gonna be polite when when they say mm -hmm. it's well, most of us will be polite. People who are not present <laughs> will probably <laughs> go on I a think, tirade. I think, every, I think <laughs> everyone that's on the show now, everyone yeah. that's on the show well, now, everyone will be present, polite. right? Okay, everyone yeah. present will be polite, kind of cringe internally, and like, okay, but let's work through this moment. Let's let's talk about what you're mm -hmm. really picking up here. Like, how do you start that process with somebody and you know. Mr. 31 Flavors himself, uh, Chuck McLaughlin, I think is, is the perfect person to kind of like give an intro to it. So I want to kick it to you. Okay. Well, what I would start with is preparation. And that's something I won't get into on this because my preparation for tasting is very thorough. And I have my own way of doing things before I even crack the bottle open. However, uh, first is the glass. I would use like, say like a, a bourbon trail glass like this one, wider mouth on it than a typical uh, Copita, which I also use or a Glencairn. Mm -hmm. Glencairn would be a little more tapered and thinner at the top, a yeah. little longer in depth. Yep. Rob's got one right there. I've yeah. never heard of that other glass. What did you call it? The Copita? Copita. Yeah. I don't know. It's what that a stemmed wine glass. Oh, okay. Okay. Or a stemmed yeah. wine glass. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Look at that, you fancy bastards. All right. There you <laughs> go. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tulip. That's a tulip yeah. glass. Mm -hmm. I'm just over here with Cafe 305, baby. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Hey, it'll be good to use. Uh, that's right. I'm the only one with that one. Uh oh. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> so then I follow up with the color on this one, which is a uh, 2012 M uh, Evan Williams single barrel. This one has a light amber color like a coppery brass. Mm. Uh, then I'd look at the legs, swirl it around. Explain legs. No, If somebody doesn't know what legs means, what does that mean? Okay. Uh, swirl it around, and it's the basically the alcohol. Next, got it. <laughs> and it's basically, right now, it has long legs, and they're tapered down like spider webbing, very thick, very viscous. And when the liquid's fixed to the side of the glass. Yeah, the liquid is basically fixed to the side of the glass, as Mal said. Yep. And, you know, now they're starting to dissipate. Mm -hmm. And that's what, you know, the legs are. Sometimes it'll be more of a, like a cascading action all the way around the whole thing mm -hmm. where you won't have any of that, the dripping, where it drips down the sides very slowly. Uh, and then as far as, you know, the, the legs go, that's about it. And then, of course, you swirl it. At least I do. And then that basically enhances the aroma, gets the aromas out. The alcohol's up and out of the glass, and then you um, smell it or nose it, if you will. A lot of people will basically just stuff their whole nose in there, uh -huh. and you can do that. But if the closer you get, it uh, brings out more of the alcohol. You're basically inhaling the basics, whether it be uh, 
you might just have vanilla or you could have like a sandalwood. See, like you do plant. you doing that. That's like, like that's the minutia. Like, I mean, obviously you have, you know, the, the repertoire there, like mm -hmm. someone's doing this for the first time and they're going, what the hell am I supposed to be smelling right now? Like, what are you like? <laughs> okay. Well, you, you know what I mean? Like if you're stuff in your, people see me do this, like I'll be hanging out like social gatherings and stuff like that. Just kind of like casually nosing the glass. I'm not really trying to nose Turkey Tom, but, <laughs> but I, <laughs> If I'm, they're looking. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, I'm, I'm nosing the glass. And then they look at you like, okay, explain again. What the fuck are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what does that mean? You know. Okay, so what you're trying to do is, especially if you're just sticking your nose in uh -huh. deep into the glass, or not deep in, but like this, straight it's on. Far enough, yeah. And you're tr you're basically smelling the basics of that, the grains possibly, the oak, the sandalwood, the very basic contents of that what's in that glass then mm -hmm. if you go like this and this is what i typically do keep you know it tilted to the side one nostril at a time because you'll get pick up different flavors or uh aromas on each side you won't get you know you'll have oh. different different aromas on one side than you will the other There's different receptacles got different sides of the brain isn't it uh, Joe? yeah yeah and uh, typically you'll get sweeter notes if you pull it like keep it away you'll get the sweeter notes the caramels the fruits yeah. um you know this the, like the sugars the candies and then what you do is you continue you've got the, da you've got the danger sorry to, uh, to, to no, cover course, now, okay. you've, got, you've got the danger that if you throw your whole nose in the glass you're just going to burn it with the ethanol the alcohol when you first pour it yes there's a good chance you will especially if you just you know if it's a fresh pour so yeah. I may let it sit for five, 10 minutes, maybe even a little longer, depending upon the, um, the proof. Um, but then, you know, you know, you know, it's side by side, side to side, you get your sweet notes. This one is vanilla. A little leather. And I get, still get that mint chocolate chip ice cream that there you go. Mint yeah. chocolate chip ice cream with this one, a very like a mint chocolate chip ice cream smell uh, to it on the nose with, with this one. Now, so as far I, as I, go piece ahead, of advice, I'll, I'll interject briefly. And when you're talking about like getting getting too much, like definitely start off farther. If you've never done this before, if you've never tried to do like try to get the nose of a whiskey, because like. And the proof isn't necessarily indicative of like how strong of a hit you're gonna get, but like mm. start far and with my big ass. Like yeah, you have to start a little bit farther away, right? <laughs> like because you don't want to you don't want to get too much because you will like basically singe the nostrils. It'll be too much. Like it can't. Oh yeah, you'll singe your nose hairs. You know, essentially, like, yeah. Yeah, kind of like choke and wreck your palate, and you know, in, in the process, start a little bit farther off, get a little bit, and then maybe kind of move in. Yes, yeah. and be just. Take it in, right, and and think about what it, what am I picking up? You know, use your imagination a little bit. Having a good vocabulary for this kind of stuff helps too. But I want to get back to that later. Go go ahead, Chuck. Can please continue? So, like I said, you know, with the nosing, you are keeping your nose away. You could pick up a pepper, uh, you know, a, some type of wood, whether it be sandalwood like this one, yeah, um, candy sweetness, and then what you do is you continue to nose it. And what I may do is, well, no, I won't even get into that because, you know, that's getting <laughs> off, off the subject. But uh, mm. it's getting a little too deep, I should say. Yeah. But then you continue to do it and nose it until you break it down to what you're nosing, whether it be uh, red hot candy or bubble gum or whatever it may be, white pepper, black pepper, uh, the type of wood. Oh, white pepper. White pepper, huh. light pepper. Huh. See, that's, I think that's one of the things. I mean, because he, he's he's this stays with me forever. When when he listed circus peanuts as a as a as a tasting note. Oh yeah, I'm I remember. Like, Who that. the hell would even think of that? And to me, that and I guess I'm just saying it now. It comes down 100 percent to like having a robust vocabulary of like smells and tastes yeah. of things that you would attribute to something because when you List the tasting note that other people pick up but can't quite put their can't quite put their finger on, and you say it immediately. Everyone's like, 
oh my god because it's like like dickle bourbon chuck and i were talking about this earlier oh yeah and, and it's like well what is that there's something on the end of it i can't quite decide and someone says flintstones vitamins and everyone goes oh my god that's exactly what it is it's flintstones vitamins it tastes like flintstones vitamins and it in the one hand you can do yourself a disservice by telling somebody that before they try it because you're yeah. biasing their palate um but on the other hand like no knowing and being able to think about that is a flavor that is a that is a smell like whatever like having that in your repertoire like your little rolodex of of flavor you know um and being able to, to draw from that with so much specificity the way well, the, Chuck does like well, that's, well, the that's same, a real the, skill to me so this, this is this, this is the uh, evan williams thing about 2012 the same joke and basically if i if i dip my finger in and just lick it like that when you said sandalwood before mm -hmm. i'm getting a new book swayed into a sandalwood kind of, mm -hmm. yeah. just dipping yes. the finger and bringing mm -hmm. it that way. And, so I, don't know, this, I don't know if that's something that you do or not. I don't. I, I do it all. No, time. I've never done that myself. Let you don't know end. where my fingers have been, actually, Mal. I cannot comment <laughs> on that, and I will not comment on that. And it's a good job that we didn't talk about this last week because That's my right. comments would have meant nothing. <laughs> but also, also, Go ahead, quick, guys, this is where we have to give a shout out to Chuck and to our group as a whole. What Look. Chuck basically just did is what a sommelier does. And if anybody out there is not familiar, a Samanye gets paid stupid money to oh, do yeah. what Chuck basically did just now. Mm -hmm. So in the grand scheme of things, just the wealth and the knowledge that he can give, you know, the wealth and knowledge Rob can give, Mark, everybody. Understand who we are as a group. Listen, we have a lot of pull. I mean, really and truly what he just did. So... If he was to give everybody the same bourbon, he can tell a story that you can follow based mm -hmm. yes. on what he says and the way he says it. Yeah. You know, the, the, the vocabulary that he uses, that's how you educate somebody. Yeah. It really does because anybody can say it was smooth and be like, oh, okay, sure. <laughs> you know? it's, the, it's, the, it's the journey, but, buddy, isn't it? Right. But, you it know, is. the fact of the matter is that he can tell you leather and he can use his vocabulary to his advantage that's some listen i, I i've seen someone years who make a hundred thousand oh, dollars and their really? only job is to taste wine and order wow. wine for the restaurant and listen a sommelier is no joke i mean it's probably a good seven year process yep before you can even get qualified mm -hmm. and i think they only do so many a year I think oh. next to a sommelier, the only thing that's harder to get is to become a master chef. Uh, just give it to you like this. <laughs> to become a master chef, it's a 10-day testing program. It costs about $10,000 just to Jeez. take it. And before you can take it, you have to basically study under two different master chefs. And the last time I checked, there was about 152 master chefs in the world, jeez. Period. So when it comes to someone, yay, they're they're right up there, and it's it's one of those things where the pressure is so hard, but they have to be able to explain and take you down a journey as a someone, yay. I yeah. mean, yeah. there's restaurants and hotels that can't even afford a someone, yay. That's why so, suburban. <laughs> Yeah, that's what <laughs> Chuck, can, Chuck, Chuck can do it with bourbon. That's like a real yeah. skill, mm -hmm. you know. So it, it's a it's a thing. Yeah. So, so you know about teaching somebody what bourbon to start with or something like that. I don't think it's something to be taken lightly. Truly, I mean, you well, know, somebody's got to be into it. But if you don't really educate somebody, you can send somebody off the goddamn rails for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's. I mean, th th those are all fantastic points, and I think it really between you and Chuck, it really gets to the heart of why we get into bourbon, why we get into spirits so much. We're not just yeah. a bunch of drunks. Like we, you know, <laughs> there, there's something experiential about, you know, sampling these different things. And, you know, <laughs> I'm not saying we're not also that. <laughs> you saw me last Friday. <laughs> well, like, yeah. Right. <laughs> you saw me go. last Friday. I don't know. Yeah. All right. But that, like, vi that video that video has been lost. It's all right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
No, that, that's, listen, that's there for, for eternity. No, anyway. Um, and on a personal, yeah. I, I think Chuck can tell who, who made the bottle, what they were dressed that day, what they drove to work. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a like a forensic psychologist can tell yeah. you tell you tell you the make model and color of the killer's car like <laughs> like all that stuff. It's uh, and, yeah and no to 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 Chuck's circus penis thing. That's one of those tastes that I tried to forget in my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As a kid, I'm like, mm, I don't think I want to remember that, but it's good that you found that somewhere in your in your memory, Chuck, because I never would have yeah. picked that out. <laughs> yeah, it's just something from experience, you know, and it was a bad experience, of course, but yeah. you know, it's one of those things that stuck with me, and I've always basically with the bourbons, it's just always been from experiences in the past taste from the past and smells from the past uh that i you know pull into this yeah so chuck let me ask you this where where would you say most of your experience comes from i mean because you seem to be almost self-taught i mean you've had to experience quite a bit of bourbon and where do you think you get your taste and your development from well i've drank i've you know had a lot of bourbon in my life yeah. Uh, <laughs> as far as you know, I may I I really don't read. I may study a little bit here and there. Uh, you know, as far as what others have done, as far as uh, in the past, I've done this anyway. Uh, how they acquired their um, the way they've done it in the past, but we're all not the same. So my you know the way I do it may be different than the way every and someone else may do it. And get their, you know, tasting notes, their, you know, nosing notes, their finishing, their finish notes. Uh, but this is just the way that's worked for me. The way I explain things, it's just basically been from experiences in the past that I bring, you know, and I pull from the bourbon itself. And then, of course, there's technique. And I have my yeah. own technique as far as, you know, tasting, nosing. You know, you've heard the nose, you know, I've already explained the nosing, the um, the swirling. Uh, and we can get into taste in a moment, but, you know, that's basically it. Are you a Kentucky chew guy when you're tasting? <laughs> no. I did. I tried. I've tried in the past. It doesn't work for me. Because what the way it? that you. I don't you, know what that is. What is it? What basically, is it? I'll show you. Yeah, you first you take a drink, of course. Let's swish and hold it. And... You chew it. Yeah. Like you're chewing. And you, you know, smack your lips around like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it's the funniest thing to see. <laughs> and basically, so if you're new, we're gonna make you do this. <laughs> Dave, you, you see this? They act like they're they act like they're like I don't know, like super king. Uh, number one, top five of the world chef out of Paris, you know. Uh, right. yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sit your ass down. But there's a way you have to do it. And basically what happens is my tongue pushes the the liquid to the to my the roof of my mouth. Uh, and you're not supposed to do it that way. And it, it just doesn't work for me. And then, of course, you breathe, you know, and then yeah. that through your mouth and then that, you know, enhances the the flavors as it's supposed to anyway yeah, it just that's, doesn't that's, work for that's me really not great with turkey tom I'll, that's, so, okay. <laughs> that's one of those things that you know the, drinking out of the turkey's ass tonight <laughs> <laughs> the, the ascot does and, and no I, the, the guy who did whistle pig talks about doing the kentucky uh, chew all the time and i okay. slipped off the top of my head so it's not necessary basically. it's not necessary it no. has their own way of tasting things, and I, yeah. I, I just did that, and and I did the chew thing. One thing I noticed when I, I, I've tried that a few times, is that it really for me brings out the ethanol burn. Yep, I really, yeah. really get that ethanol burn because I'm, I'm, I don't know if it, maybe it introduces too much air for me when I'm doing a when I'm doing yeah. a chew, and it, and it's it, it's mm -hmm. it's an instant kind of. Like I just did it. My mouth is kind of like. Eh. Yeah. I don't. I don't necessarily do the chew thing, but I do kind of. I hold the. I hold the, the liquid in my mouth, and and I, and I, I kind of inhale through my teeth. 
Yeah. Mm. And I've, I've, yeah. I've done I've done that a number of times before, and and it and it gives the same effect, Rob, that you've just described there. Uh, and and that's a very wine way of tasting it. So you're yeah. you, when you're when you're drinking it and you're inhaling, yeah. you're, you're you're introducing air as you're as you're trying to sip it down. That's a that's a, a lot of sommeliers do that. It's not. It's out. not as I, it's not as I sip it. It's as I've got. So I'll I'll sip it. I'll sip it. I'll bring the liquid into my mouth without any air, and then while it's in my mouth, I'll 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 breathe. I'll, I'll, I'll suck in the air through my teeth rather than sip like a like a tea sip. A, a tea sip is you know, yeah. and, and you, you you take the liquid in with the air. Well, take it, the liquid it, in first, and then bring the air in through the teeth. It gives right. the same effect essentially. Yeah. The and it, you know, my limited very limited wine knowledge you know it, it, wine is well, I, I 13 14 15 percent maybe you get some that 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 peak yeah. up into uh, up into the lower up into the higher teens but yeah. there's no chance of getting that ethanol burn yeah. when, when out of the wine mm. so yeah. maybe some air introduction as there as the wine it, when you're introducing air with the wine they're able to pick out some more of the, some more of those. You know, like mm-hmm. a, a white tends to be. It's the it's the tannin, it's the tannin in the fruit or whatever. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. Let's let's let Chuck uh, continue because what we're. Yeah, in the tip. Let's, right. Right. let's yeah. get back to being sexy. That's right. So like I said, you're, you're nosing. You're you know you're basically keeping the glass away, picking up uh, sweet notes, vanilla. Little fruit, but then once you finish doing that, which we've already discussed, you want to go for the taste. Now, your first taste is basically going to be a small sip, and you want to basically coat your mouth with it, your entire mouth. And at least that's what I do, I should say. Not everyone yeah. else, it may not work for you, but cheers. All right. So it's coating my mouth. It's going down the sides under my tongue. And it's coating the sides of my mouth like a buttery uh, coating. Uh, very velvety. But um, what I should say is on your the tip of your tongue should bring out the sweet notes. The middle should bring out any of the savory notes, and the back of your tongue should bring out the spicy, you know, pick up the spicy notes. And with this one, of course, I get, uh, you know, a taste of that sandalwood, that oak, that vanilla. Little toffee. Um... I like that you, you guys are drinking the same thing. It kind of makes me wish we were all doing it, being like, you know, oh, okay, we're all getting that. Are you getting this? Are you getting that? that that'd be fun to do sometime. But anyway. Butterscotch? Sure. Yeah, I said, yeah, toffee. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got a butterscotch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's a creamy, like a creamy vanilla butter, um, <laughs> a buttery taste going down the side of my mouth, uh, yeah. much like a, like a pudding. Yeah. Mm. I almost get a little like, sweet tea on the back end. Almost like a creme brulee with a yeah. tea in the back, yeah. Yeah. And then the finish is pretty decent. It's a medium finish. So, and that's maybe something, you know, the, the average or the, the new person to a, a bourbon is not going to understand, Chuck. Maybe tell them what, where, what the finish is. How, how does the finish... And, it, and and finishes vary from short to long, depending on the bourbons, what you're drinking, what flavors you're looking for. Agreed, Kara. Sorry, mm-hmm. go ahead. Oh, it's very delicious. Yes. Um, yeah, it's basically the time that the uh, once you once you you know take your sip, you swallow. How long does that flavor remain after you do that? How long, the individual, how long the individual flavors remain? Really? Yes. 
Yes. But, but 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 change. But, but anyway, yeah. yeah, and those those flavors may change as it's finishing. Yeah. So as it's finishing, you still may be tasting different things. Once before you know, uh, before you swallow, you're tasting things. Then once you swallow, you're tasting things, other different things, or the same. Yeah. But it's the length of time. Yeah, but no, and I agree. And another thing to keep in mind, like this is all a very subjective process, right? Like your mm -hmm. your experience may be vastly different from my own. You know, my your your palate and your vocabulary kind of you know changes significantly. If you don't necessarily have the words to describe, I would go back yeah, to the peanuts. You might I'm, you might I'm, call it something else, and you're trying to get around to that. You know, where where somebody else mm -hmm. has a more specific term. I'm, I'm, smoke, I'm smoking a cigar at the same. I'm smoking a cigar at the same time, and the sweetness probably dissipates quicker sure. with me than it does with Chuck at the moment. But the spice lasts longer with me. Yeah, I can at, see that at the, at the moment. Anyway, okay. Yeah. Another another thing I do, and and I'm kind of asking for recommendations for other folks. It, and I, I try not to do this before I try something. I mean, I try to do it after. Maybe I've tried it one or two times. Is go look up um, someone who's given tasting notes on a drink, mm. and be like, okay, so this is what I this is what I picked out. I picked out you know these couple of flavors. We moved past smooth. You know, I'm getting you know the light oak spice. I get baking spices. I get vanilla. I get you know whatever I'm getting. You know, I'm like, yeah. okay, this is all cool. But what do other people have to say? You know, and then like I'll go and read. And it's not so much to be like, do I pick that up too? But like, this is a flavor. I'm trying to kind of build my own repertoire of like, what can I pull from? And then I go back and try it again. It's like, well, well, one did did I get that that other that other note that this other person was talking about? And also just knowing that that's a that's a thing that can be described. You know, if I'm talking about you know like this happens more with rum than it does with whiskey, but like I'll get like, you know, bananas very co you know, common with that, you know, you'll get cane sugar, which obviously, you know, it comes from, um, and you know, or like clove or, or whatever else is going on. Yeah. I do exactly the same. You read, you read after you've tried it. Thanks Melvin. And then you make that. Yeah. You, you make, you make that sort of not a comparison. It's, well, it is, it is a comparison, but, yeah, yeah, but you, you you wait till after you've done it yourself, blind, if you like. Right, because you you're less likely to bias yourself. Because like if I read, someone said, "Oh, you get you know this, like, this, you know, an oak spice and a mild finish, heavy mouth feel," and then I drink it, and I go, "I get a mild oak spice, vanilla, and heavy mouth feel." Like you're like I've just <laughs> you know I've just been you know yeah. kind of. I've been blinded by that. Yes, you've been that, not because I put it in my head now. Like yeah. Don't do that, you know, especially if you just just figure out what it is you're picking up. If you can only describe just in a very basic sense, do I get I get pepper, you know, not necessarily because you were talking about like white pepper earlier versus black pepper. Like I'm yeah. getting pepper. That's something. That's a start, you know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If you like it without knowing why you like it, stick with it. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have the ASCOM. Yeah. You don't have to have the, the triple H walk. You don't need you don't need that stuff. Yes, sir. Yeah. It helps. It helps, but like <laughs> you but don't have develop. to have that stuff it, to start off. It will. It will develop though. If you like yeah. it, for whatever reason, you don't know why you like it, but you like it. Stick yeah. with it, and the taste yes. will. The, 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 the notes will develop. I like it because it's smooth. Yeah. <laughs> and but, like a, <laughs> I mentioned, <laughs> so your first polite. sip, your first sip is going to be basically, you're just going to basically get your, you know, coat your mouth, mm. and get the basic taste going. Then your second sip, you may uh, taste something else. You it may be more defined. Your third sip, you know, and, and so on and so forth, will continue to evolve those flavors and bring them out into the forefront for you. And it's all in how you breathe as well. Yeah, with absolutely. With this, because you can you, breathe. Basically, you made a good uh, point there. You, you might taste something, but you can't place it. Yeah, uh, yeah, basically yeah, when you Gene's point, yeah. when you yeah, take a I'm when you take a step. Yeah. yeah, you look at someone else's notes and then you're going like there's something I can't quite describe it, you know, it's like the like the Flintstones vitamins moment, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. When you're like holy hell, yeah, that is and I've just screwed that up for everyone who's not tried Dickel bourbon, but you'll probably be disappointed anyway. Uh, <laughs> <so> like, <laughs> but you know what though? I I think that's why for us 
it's important that we try to be impartial but yeah. informative at the same time. Yeah. You know, it's like the other day when I walked into Costco and I snapped a picture of that of that bird, man. I forget which one it was, but it was the one with the bottle and the gun handle type stopper. Oh, the oh, Derringer. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, you know, to the point, it was a cool bottle, but based off the, the feedback the I got, yeah, it, it there was zero chance of me buying it. Mm-hmm. And you know, that was strictly based off that I trust the opinion of the people in this group, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's I think why I'd... it's for us that we continue to be, you know, informative about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Here's one. Marvin, can you give, can you guys give recommendations for straight whiskey? Some of the bourbons are too sweet for me. Something to say, a straight whiskey. Oh yeah. Not, off the top of your heads, gentlemen, anything? <sighs> I mean, I've got some stuff that's local to PA that I really, really what? like. There's a, see a this. distillery called Big Spring Spirit. No, I can't see it, Mark. Is that the Nassif yeah. family? Yeah, Nassif family. Yeah. You can't, yeah, it won't show up. But you, Nassif you can family. find that, yeah. Okay. And thank you again for that rum, brother. Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, no, it's a good rum. But also, yeah, they, if they make rum and whiskey, just yeah. to clarify, not, they, they do make not, a good not too, not too sweet straight whiskey is a generic term maybe something tennessee mm-hmm. yeah i mean a tennessee whiskey wouldn't be a bourbon um necessarily well he didn't uh, ask for a bourbon he asked for a whiskey i'm not i'm not trying he, did, he asked for a straight whiskey rather yeah. than yeah. a bourbon because he finds bourbons too sweet it's probably the, yeah. the corn content maybe if it's if it's high corn versus maybe he wants a more of a, a higher rye, high rye yeah i was so, high so, rye. Something, something higher right but yeah i mean i wouldn't go for a higher right bourbon if he's asking for a whiskey if he's asking yeah. for a whiskey i would go a tennessee whiskey yeah yeah or even yeah. just uh even if you just go to it with more of a rye you're you're not you're definitely not getting sweet out of a rye oh definitely yeah yeah, no, yeah. I, was yeah. Whiskey. I would i mean i would even go as if in terms of being able to find it, like like uh, like smoke wagon, like just there. Oh yeah, I was I was, gonna, I was gonna say that yeah. It's not overly sweet. It, it no, was not, not to me. All. And yeah. I think Birken isn't Birkenridge a, a whiskey or is it a bourbon? I don't remember. Breckenridge is, is a whiskey. Stranahan's is an American whiskey. Danny Rod. Danny Rod's a Tennessee whiskey. Stranahan's is is really a a a. Danny Rod. Danny Rod. It wouldn't be my go-to, but it's not bad. No, no, that's not well, be my, I mean, it it be my go-to either. It's because I don't it know where Marvin's at. I, I try to make recommendations that are not necessarily, which we can all, most of us can think of things that are local to us that would be attractive. But like something like wherever, you know, wherever this fellow's at, like. Dude, dude none of this is local. Up? None of this is local to me, dude. So. <laughs> oh, he's in D.C. So, I, was, I was raised in D.C. suburbs. But there I think Breckenridge Bre- 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 is pretty easy to find, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Breckenridge, Bre- 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 anywhere. is the basic Stranahan's straight American whiskey is pretty easy to find. Um, there's a one that's called Bernheim, B E R N H E I M. Yeah. I've had that before. Yeah. That's all right. That's a, it's a straight American whiskey that's a, a higher wheat content. It'll be a little sweet, but it won't be bur- It won't be that bourbon sweet that he's looking no. for. Now, David, what did you think about St. George's Baller? The ball- I, didn't, I didn't think it was overly sweet. It was fruity, but I didn't think overly sweet. It was, to me, it was like musky. Like, yeah. It was yeah, very, Melvin, it was very Melvin, herbal. That. Yeah, so Melvin, it's the... Um, it's St. George's. St. George's also does that. I like it. And it, but it wouldn't be. This is a this is a love it or hate it kind of thing. It is. It really is. It's, yes. it's called. Yeah, try it when you're out. It's called Baller. Uh, thank you, Chuck, for that too. Um, oh yeah, no worries. But the Baller, it's the it's very pear or apple heavy to me. It's like a. It, yeah. It's like like to me on the pear. front end. It's, you get I get yes. pear on the front end, pear apple or like green apple on the front end, and then. It's green apple, of, to, green it, apple to me. Green apple to me means a very young whiskey, dude. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, me personally, me That's personally, yeah. the taste. Bernheim. Bernheim, okay. yeah. yeah, yeah. I've had that before yeah. all that tonight. Yeah, and the baller has it. Uh, it's weird because it looks like it's Japanese whiskey, but it's not Japanese at all. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It does look Japanese good. whiskey isn't Japanese, man. <laughs> it's yeah. good. Gotcha, yeah. right about that. Yeah, you know, basically, <laughs> yes. And also to another point, Chuck made. You know, he spoke about preparation. Uh, yeah. When it comes to trying something new or you're going to try a bourbon, 
don't try try not to have anything harsh beforehand. You know, yeah. make sure you clean Ooh. your palate. Yeah. Some room temperature water, um, some grapes. People often say cheese, but cheese can leave a flavor sometimes. Yeah. So you know, if cheese you really might. want to try to get a good taste of what something is, some room temperature water. You know, I cold water is not going to hurt, but sometimes it can shock your palate if it's really, really cold. Temperature. Water. You know, you got to figure the, the internal temperature. Your mouth is over 90 degrees so you drink a bottle of cold water it's gonna you know kind of yeah. shock your palate a little bit so yeah. you know be mindful of what you're eating beforehand that's um, a fantastic point yeah i can tell you i often have a cigar with bourbon and because i know what i like and i know what things are supposed to taste like it may not affect me so much but if i'm smoking a padron 7000 i know it's going to be fighting with my bourbon regardless you know, yeah, that, that's kind of how I am with cigars in general. I mean, I've already explained, you know, baby ass lungs and stuff, but like, I wouldn't want anything that had, you know, particular notes that I might miss, you know, that because they're getting crowded out by, you know, by the cigar. You know, I would want to be just like I'm drinking, you know, because, you know, I'm all sinusy and congestion and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm fighting a cold right now. I'm drinking to Turkey Tom because, like, it, it doesn't matter so much how that tastes. Like I'm just trying <laughs> to get out of his ass. my body to kill germs right now. Yeah, like, it's out of his ass. Who that's that's where I'm. Like. Yeah, this thing's only 80 proof. Like it's not even strong. Like uh, I'm gonna go with something a little bit harder. But like it was there. It was available. It's kind of yeah, funny. Little, so like ass whiskey. You know, it's good. Yeah, you know, just drinking you know, a little. You know, plug plugging the ass up when you're done. You know, you gotta. <laughs> this thing's hilarious. I don't know what I want to do with it because like I'm not like into figurines or anything. But like. I would feel almost what, a little what, bit bad getting you throwing this away. Like, yeah, it's you know. once in seventy. Send it to me, dude. I'd I'd love that shit. I'll put that in my box. <laughs> it looks like something you'll find at an old lady's yard sale. <laughs> yeah. 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 This is like the Santa figurines, you know, like yeah. This is this is basically what this is. But this this was fun. I got to I, I told you it was, like, it was like a door prize for costume contest that uh, nice. we did it. Nice. But, Natural bourbon barrel, like Halloween type party. But anyway, um, oh, so it's something Jay yeah. didn't want, and he palmed off to you. <laughs> you know, but you, you guys know I'm a trash panda when it comes to whiskey. Like it, it that didn't matter. Like I was like, you're gonna give me whiskey? Okay, I, I'm cool. I'll take it. <laughs> and here, and here I am putting it to good use. But uh, anyway, oh, where the hell are we? Yeah, I was gonna say oh, actually, in terms of just like straight whiskey. I haven't had this in a very long time, but like, what do you guys think about like tin cup? Like, as it, is it is it too remember. low bar, low bar? Because like I've seen no, like not a like they have single barrel, they have like higher renditions other than like their most basic stuff. But like never for had people who, who didn't understand palettes and stuff like that, like my little brother, like one of the first whiskeys I had with him was tin cup because it comes basically with a little metal shot glass that comes on top of the bottle. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, he'll love this. He, you know, he's like 23 or whatever. Like, oh yeah, he'll love this, and I won't. Have spent a bunch of money on something he's not going to appreciate because he drinks like plastic bottle bullshit. Like so, like you know, we, we we can start here with that. But like they have like better versions of it. And I was wondering, like, because I know like their basic offering is not great, and maybe wonder like, is it even worth trying? And it sounds like everyone else is kind of in agreement with me. Of like, I haven't really gone there. So I can't only ever had, only ever had the standard offering, and um, not for me personally. Oh yeah. Yep. I, I I can't say that I've ever had it, so well, it's not awful, but very forgettable, you know. So, but I was curious because, like, you know, I used to have the same impression about you know things like you know Maker's Mark or whatever, having the very you know the baseline Maker's Mark. I'm like, eh, you know, it's okay, it's fine for a mixer, you know, whatever when you're at the bar. But like, obviously, Maker's Mark has a great lineup, like very great lineup. So like, they have other offerings, and it made me wonder about uh, Tin Cup as well. I've seen like sort of higher end stuff, but I've never messed with it. So listen, what the, the stuff that Maker's Mark has been coming out with, I think you know their basic offering is not for bourbon drinkers. Yeah, I think it's sure. just for the hotels and the bars to say they have it and they have mm -hmm. it. You mm -hmm. know, so it, it, it's one of those things where this is meant for. Mm -hmm. a, 90% of the people and all the other offering is for the other 10% of people. Right, right. You know, the question from, yeah, question okay, from the, okay. All right, Mickey. Mickey wants to know 
what's a good quote unquote girl whiskey for a beginner? First of all, I no such thing. I don't believe in such no. a thing as like a girl whiskey. I, no, I've heard of that, like chick liquor yeah. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I I I don't agree with that terminology. But chick liquor over here in the UK means something completely different, dude. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Um, that was good. That was good. Well, let's answer. Let's answer her question. So you know, you know, I'm, you know where I'm gonna go. Um, if if you really really like sweet. If you really, really like sweet, oh, Ice Man. If you really like sweet, then I would say yeah, no, no, you could try BSB, but that's really, really, really sweet. Um, if you're if you're not a sweet, like an overly sweet person, I'm gonna start you like I would with anybody else. But I'd go always Rebel. I'd go Evan Williams Green Label. Mm. I would go in this case Basil Toast. I you know I kind of have yeah. my standards that I that I yeah. do. Basil yeah. toast, if you can find it. I mean, even regular basil is really not bad because it's a little bit on the so, side. Yeah, yeah it's over. But my wife is not necessarily a, a, a bourbon drinker. She gets – it gives her instant heartburn. Ah, but yeah. There's – I've got oh, this dark one. Rye. Dark rye, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. Basil yeah. Hayden dark rye, which she re- – we actually sat outside and killed that much of a bottle one night. Nice. Nice. Um, it's 80 proof. You get a lot of sweetness out of it because of the it's it's finished in port barrels. So you get you definitely get a lot of that sweeter port flavor into it. And, and she didn't get that burn that she gets from gotcha. other things. So. Yeah, I think maybe maybe that's the main thing is that you want to make a selection that avoids like that ethanol burn finish. Yes. Rebel, you know what else yeah. is good? The uh um, uh, rebel Tony port is uh is uh, a good okay. part as well. I would also, say Chattanooga whiskey actually. They're, what what, what I would yeah, yeah. mm-hmm. is a what, nice one to start with. What I would say because I don't believe there's anything as a as a girl whiskey or woman whiskey either. I would say if anything, maybe a little bit more on the ice side. You know, if you um, want to kind of calm it down a little bit. Um, but no, I don't. I don't think anything's proved that I would say is a girl whiskey. Mm. Um, my wife loves bullet. Like she will come home with it by herself. Um, nice. and I think all the offerings that bullet offer are pretty good. And if yeah. you're not really into something like that, you can just add a little bit more ice to it, water it down a little bit. And I think you'll be good. You know, oh, Jack Cosine. Look at that. The bullet tenure, Billy is, I think is, is suitable for all palates to be honest with you. The bullet tenure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love that one. Yeah. Good place to start. Yeah. And, that, and that's kind of what we're looking at is like when there are people who are not really into hard liquor, but like yeah. could develop an appreciation for some of this stuff at least, you know. You know I mean? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll revert. That, I'll revert. That's all, something, kind of like what I said earlier. Bridge, basically. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was going to say something I alluded to earlier. Not flavored, but finished. Is a good yeah. place to start. Yeah, yeah. Finished is a good one with certain so, ones. I think. Yeah. Port finish, port those, finish the, red wine finish, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes um, they can get a little gimmicky, but I think overall, yes, a lot absolutely. of them can be great if you if you kind of know what to look for. There is yeah. there, there, there's a couple of decent honey bourbons. That may be uh, maybe an idea. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Now, uh, Rob, oh, yeah. you know what else is good, Rob? The uh, when you just another when you can find it, if you can get your hands on it, it's the blue basil rye. That's the Caribbean or the, the Caribbean rum cast. Caribbean rum I cast. Have, I've one. Seen that. Yeah. yeah. Or that uh, has very yeah. little. It has very little burn at all. Another one oh, that has very little burn is the uh, noble oak. Not the rye, but mm-hmm. the regular normal oak. It's a it's a sherry finish. So Ooh, I good. think that would go would go nice for somebody yeah. who's, you know, I don't again I don't want to say a woman's drink, but you know it it's one yeah. of those things that's a little bit easier on the palate for sure. Can I can yeah. I offer oh, um, can I can I can I offer a Scotch rather than a bourbon? And Billy, Do I think it. you'll agree with me here with the the Balvenie rum cask. I'm, I'm in charge tonight, man. We can talk about Scotch. <laughs> <laughs> I listen. I, think, all, 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 I, I was just going to say, I'll offer, I'll offer one opinion here, and the the, the Balvini, uh, fourteen year old rum yes, cast, the, absolutely, yeah, the cast, 100%. easy to get. Yeah, it's it's easy to get, 
it's not the cheapest, but it's no, not it's by not. far the most expensive either. And also, uh, Dewar's uh, rum cast, Caribbean yes. cast, sorry. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Which you can find anywhere, and I think it's like 25 bucks. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, Mickey said honey sounds yummy. This this is definitely true. I have what is it, the King's Disco- Distillery out of um, it's around Gatlinburg somewhere. Um, that they have their honey, it, it's really good. Um, yeah. but it's harder to find, it's more expensive. Most of the honey bourbons are more pricey, yeah. Um, and, and just to follow up on that, the Woodford Double Oak, I actually just had somebody ask me, like, I've got 50 bucks, what, what do I buy? Like, straight up, I'm like, Woodford Double Oak. Yep. Yeah, cash money. What, 90, 90 cash, proof. Ca- another cash one. money yeah. all day. Go. Like you'll never. Yeah. You'll, if you like whiskey at all, you'll like this. Like you won't me. go. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's something for you know talked about the honey is like don't go out and get the Jack honey or no no yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Honey. Stuff. yeah those those products are actually honey added. You know, yeah, there's the flavored. A, Watch the game. Yeah, flavored, sure. right? Yeah. And, and we talk a lot about we, we've talked a lot on our in, in our if, show. If if you're new, you should follow so, us so we can steer you in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, like and subscribe. Fun, that's a fun, hit the, hit the little bell thingy. You know, so that you get notifications when we're going live and stuff like that. We're gonna steer you the right way. Get in this chat. Talk to us. You know, we're we're here to help you out. That's, Chuck, a, that's, a, fa- that's a fantastic point, though, Rob. It's not like not the honey added bourbons not the which is what i said before it's the flavored bourbon right it's the honey the honey finished bourbons so it, it's the finished not the flip not the added not the added like good times <laughs> oh god my yeah. oh, stomach hurts no. right now oh my <laughs> stomach's hurting <sighs> so why make my stomach hurt man <laughs> so why be enhanced <laughs> yeah right guys we're we're over here we're over an hour now we're about hour and 12 minutes. Hour yeah. So uh probably time to end the live show. Um, thank you everyone for watching, participating. Uh enjoyed yeah. all the comments. Uh it, it was great and fun. Um, I've got to finish this uh turkey tom or tom turkey, whatever it is. Turkey Tom. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna transition to the after show. So if you're one of the VIP members, you know, you're you can be privy to that still. Um, otherwise, again. Please like and subscribe. Uh, please check us out on Facebook, YouTube. Please check out Cafe 305. Um, check Deep. out their website and all the uh, Chef Billy Breedlove stuff. Um, great, great content that he puts out as well. Um, and, of course, very appreciative to him. Um, but, yeah, that, that said, uh, yeah. Let's keep rebellion, guys. Be good to yourself. Yeah. There it is. There it is. Awesome. Damn it. You guys be good to yourselves. We'll see you next time. All right.